Hey everybody, I'm JJ. You're watching Reality Survival. So right now I just want to talk to you about a story I saw in uh, Yahoo Financial, I think it was. Or it was originally came out on Financial Times. And uh, it is regarding uh, an individual's prediction. This guy's name is Peter Turchin. Apparently he's come up with a model that you know predicts based off of economic circumstances, uh, what conditions can lead to macro violence within a community. And his assertion in this article is that the United States is much closer to macro violence. So widespread violence within a community or within a, within a country. Um, and you know, th in the article, they're talking about things like civil war, foreign invasion, you know, political collapse, like, you know, macro violence, not, not so much, uh, you know, smaller scale violence, like what happened in 2020, although they cite the year 2020 as a, a potential significant year. Um, so <clears throat> is that going to happen? in the United States. Um, it's possible. I mean, I don't know if we are necessarily more, um, more likely to see it happen than Russia. It's possible because the, the government has a, a lot tighter control over the populace in Russia than they do here in the United States, right? We have freedoms and that kind of thing. So, and you know, district attorneys that are not willing to prosecute people for blatantly, you know, grievous crimes. Um, so yeah, I think that, I think it, it could, it could potentially happen. Now, I don't necessarily know when or how that's going to unfold, but his assertion is, is that these, that this things, this, these tight cycles of violence come about every 50 years. And I thought that was interesting. And so his, his claim was is that the last time we saw this was like in the 70s and that you know this period of the 2020s um would also be one now the thing that i found interesting about that is as you guys know if you watch regularly i've done some videos where i talked about converging cycles and that this is just another cycle in the the list of you know several that are converging at the same time that lend credence to the idea that there's probably going to be some big upheaval event. You know, we've talked about the fourth turning, talked about the, you know, uh, fourth industrial revolution, um, you know, the business cycles, the war cycles, you know, all this, all this stuff, they all kind of are all kind of converging right now. And it's never really done that before. Um, so many things all at one time. So <clears throat> chances are chances are probably higher than they normally have been that we see uh, increased levels of violence. What does that mean for you, or what can you do about it? Um, I mean, is move to a more rural area? That's gonna that's gonna help, even though. You know, even in the suburbs are, are starting to get more and more dangerous. We just talked about this the other day that the Chilean uh, theft group, it's, it's a funny name for a, a gang, but you know, there's this organized gang from Chile that is striking suburb, wealthy suburban neighborhoods um, all over the place. And then just general crime in, in the suburbs is tending to go up as well. Um, But the, the more rural that you are, the more likely you're going to be safe from this this kind of violence. It's not to not to say that in a, in a rural area that there aren't potentials for violence in certain scenarios, but in the scenarios that are most likely to happen, and where we're most likely to see um, you know the increases in violence and all that kind of stuff, then the more rural, the more rural areas are going to be better. You can still find, uh, if you're willing to live in a small town, you know, like rural, real rural property with multiple acres of land, 
is pretty expensive and it's out of reach for a lot of people's budget, even in the, the cheapest areas that you can buy a property in the country, like, you know, the Ozarks and, uh, you know, rural Tennessee, rural Kentucky, Indiana, Alabama, um, you know, that if you want to get 10 acres and a, and a house, a three bedroom, two bath house, even in the, in the more economically depressed areas, you know, you're still looking at 350 plus in a lot of places. Um, and you know, so that might be out of, out of reach for some people, but if you're willing to live in town in a small town of, you know, four or 5,000, uh, there's a lot of places where you can get really reasonable houses still, you know, 200,000, um, 250,000 can get you a pretty decent place in, uh, and, and the interest rates are starting to come back down somewhat to a reasonable, historically reasonable level, uh, around 5% or something like that right now as we were recording this, I think. But, you know, <clears throat> if you can find a job where you can remote work or, you know, something like that, and you're willing to live just in a small hick town that's maybe within, you know, 20 to 30 minutes from a, a little bit larger satellite city with 30 to 40,000 people or something like that, you're, you're reducing your crime risk significantly by doing that. Um, and, you know, I guess this is sort of a, an appeal to the fathers and the protectors out there, you know, that that's, that's your job is to look forward at these trends and make sure that you're that you have your family in the, the places that are the safest, that offer the best chances that you're going to keep your family safe. At least that's my opinion. I think I think that's your job. Um, it's it's at least uh, at least a shared responsibility at a minimum, right? I mean, it, it is the the mother and father and the family, you know. Um, and a lot of those areas, there's there's definitely jobs that people are looking for. It might not be the job that you want. It might not be, um, you know, the, the perfect thing that you're qualified for. And maybe you take a cut in pay, but you're also cutting your cost of living a lot. You know, um, I mean, I, I definitely wouldn't recommend New Hampshire <laughs> as a place to live. The, the property taxes up here are so Un, I mean, they're they're extremely oppressive. I, I pay about a thousand dollars a month in just property taxes, not the mortgage, not you know the homeowner's insurance, all that kind of stuff. Just the property tax. And yeah, we don't have any state income tax, but good lord, I mean, I would way rather have an income tax at the rate of most states than pay a thousand dollars a month in property tax. I mean, it's just. It's crazy when compared to some places, um, you know, like North Carolina, Tennessee and stuff, you, you might be paying a hundred dollars a month in some of those places, you know, for comparable kind of, of places uh, to what I have now. So, you know, maybe 200 or so on the outside. Anyway, it's just kind of crazy. So really consider consider moving make sure that you're armed when you go out and about make sure that you've got um, you know some some concealed carry insurance and stuff like that so that you have some sort of backing I'm, I'm still trying to find the best uh, the best program out there I think at this point firearms legal protection might be the the best one still doing research on that do your own research look for sure um, have the ability to defend your home inside your house. Burglaries and home invasions and all that are becoming more and more common and they're probably, it's, that trend's probably gonna keep going up. Make sure you've got some body armor. Um, I had somebody in the, in the comments the other day was, was talking about uh, 
that you don't have time to put on body armor, and I'm paraphrasing, it's not an exact quote, but that you may not have time to put on uh, body armor in a home invasion situation. And I'm like, well, maybe you don't, but most likely you will. Most likely you're gonna, if, you, if you're following the four Ds of home security, right? Um, if, well, let's see, what is it? It's uh, detect and detour, detour, detect, delay, defend, right? So, and, and there's some variations to this, but basically if you've got, you know, some motion cameras out, sort of out front of your house you, you, and, you, and they record automatically, turn lights turn on, um, and that, uh, that can send an alert to your phone that that is a, like the I use the ring cameras and those work really well I know anytime somebody comes on or around my property or my doors I've got cameras at each each uh, entry point and um, so I mean even like squirrels go by I get alerted you know so doing that and then uh, having good high security locks on your on your house so that it, it's a little harder for a thief to get in. That they're not gonna keep a thief out entirely. If they wanna get in, they'll get in. It just makes them make a little bit more noise and makes them take a little bit longer so that you have time to slip on that Express Body Armor t-shirt from nationalbodyarmor.com, discount code Reality Survival, save you 25%. And then grab your handgun to go down there and you know deal with the threat if that's the way that you choose to do it. You know I've I've talked about the right way to, to deal with the uh, home invasions and it might be depending on your circumstance to just stay in place, stay behind cover, call out to them, let them know that you're armed, and they're probably going to leave. Um, but if you have children at other places in the house or whatever, and you need to go and and move to the threat to make sure that they don't get to your children or what whatever the case may be then uh you want to do that and the be the best prepared that you possibly can and putting on some body armor and grabbing your firearm um you know is probably the right call and so if you if you've done these things correctly most untrained criminals are gonna make a bunch of noise. They're gonna be scared as it is coming into somebody's house because I don't care how many times they've done it. When you're going in there, there's always that question in the back of their mind, is somebody gonna be home and is somebody, you know, are they gonna wake up? Unless your bedroom door just happens to be right by the door that they came in, it's very unlikely that they're gonna, you know, come straight in, immediately bust through the door and immediately come to your bedroom. That's just not very realistic. Has it happened in the past anecdotally? Maybe. Um, but that's that's not usually the case. The, the, the fact pattern on most burglaries is that they're looking for quick, high value items that they can carry, you know, multiple things, and they're gonna have to search around a little bit to find all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so they're gonna be rustling through, you know, making noise and all that kind of thing. And, and then um, you'll most likely have a chance to respond. That's the typical situation. Could there be variations from that? Obviously there could. Um, but if you move to a rural area, use the four Ds, um, you've got you know good insurance to cover yourself and you're prepared and you have a home defense weapon, some body armor, you know, and your cell flight or cell phone and, and a, a weapon with a flashlight on it you're you're setting yourself up to be in a way better position than somebody who is living in the city uh maybe they don't have any firearms they don't have any sort of security on the you know uh, cameras or or high security locks or anything like that and you haven't really thought about what the consequences of a shooting are and all that like that person if i just described you you're the you're the guy that these videos are meant for. Like, you really need to take steps to prepare yourself to to think, res, be a responsible citizen, and think what critically think about what are the things that happen 
if I have a home invasion? How does that whole thing work? All the way through, you know, past the point when the police leave and, you know, you've had to, to talk with them and, you know, how much of a statement should you give to them and all those kinds of things. Like, critically think about what happens if that, if that happens to me. And then go through and try to do all the steps that you can ahead of time to mitigate that risk because the the risk of something like this happening a home invasion a burglary or you know uh, just a, a break in somebody stealing your crap what however you want to categorize it that's way way more likely than you know us going into full blown civil war or uh, some foreign invasion or whatever, like that article talked about. Um, in my opinion, you know, I, I think that that is, that's, it's way more likely that more people are gonna get victimized um, in an in a individual situation like that than, you know, an all out craziness type thing. Maybe, maybe we're more likely than Russia to, to to happen to see those things happen I don't necessarily know if that's the case or not I think we're definitely trending in that direction I still tend to think that we're probably you know 20 to 25 years off from that happening I think there's a lot of buildup still left because there's most most people are just now starting to get to where they're really, really having a hard time paying their bills um, and it's surprising how far, how miserable people have to be before they will stand up and demand their rights back. And I don't know that we're there yet in this country. I think that we have a, a ways to go before that happens because even though it's tight, most people will pick up a second job, they'll get a side hustle. You know, they're gonna stretch this out as long as they can because rightfully nobody wants to pick up guns and you know become uh, violent right no normal sane person wants to do that and so how long does it take for an economy to to just you know go down and down and down and down and I, I think history has shown in a, in a wealthy nation like ours it doesn't usually happen overnight most commonly it takes a couple of decades it takes a while and so if we're headed in that direction, which I'm not 100% certain that we are, but if we are, um, then it's probably gonna take some time, in my opinion. Again, that's all this channel is, is my opinion, right? <laughs> but uh, anyway, guys, just throwing that out there, you gotta, you gotta think about the four Ds of home security and um, you gotta incorporate that in wherever you're at. You know, you, even if you're in the city, and you can't leave for whatever reason. Um, I mean, I, I think you really should reevaluate whether or not can't is, is actually true. There might be some circumstances where some people are truly trapped, but I think most people, if they're willing to sacrifice and reorder their life a little bit, um, then they can figure out ways to do it. But uh, wherever you're at, figure out how to incorporate those four Gs and you will give yourself more time so that if it does happen to you, if you do experience uh, interpersonal violence, then you'll be better prepared for it. Uh, and, and if you're living in a more remote area, then if we do experience macro level violence, like the article suggests, then you will also uh, be in a better position to deal with that as well. So. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to live the six Ps, proper prior preparation, prevents poor performance. And hey, don't forget to download our cell phone app, American Prepping Academy. Um, it's free on the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. It doesn't collect any personal information. We've got 15 very cool prepper channels on there and uh, it'll notify you inside of the app every time that they upload new videos. So check it out. All right, thanks guys, take care, bye.